<laughs> I think I'm just feeling the energy of the room, the energy of this moment, and it just, it takes a moment to just take it all in, right? I mean, just feel into that. And remember that it is an expression of the very power of love and the power of God and the power of guidance in our lives because I am just so grateful that so many of us, right, have said yes to God's plan for us because I really do believe that it was God's plan for us to be gathered here together, that there is something really special about each and every one of us that felt that calling to be with each other, to be in spiritual community, and had that yes. And sometimes we don't even um, think so much about the little yeses that we say that add up to the big yes. The little yeses that we say to the small miracles that when we look back, we start to recognize just the transformation that has taken place not only within our own lives, but the transformation that we have been a part of in the life of humanity. And so we have said yes to being gathered today. We have said yes to being alive in this moment. We have said yes to experiencing this moment as a gift. And we were meant to rise. We were meant to shine. And I believe that today, whether we knew it or not, today is the most important day of our life. Today is the single most important day of our life because today is the day that we've got right? Like yesterday is yesterday. The future has yet to be. And so the day to be present and to be fully willing to experience the greatness that God in, is in us and through us, the greatness of recognizing that Christ is risen and that there is something for us to be able to tap into as we are celebrating and as we are honoring Easter. This is such a powerful thing and it's a special day because it's a day in which we get to make choices, we get to decide just how committed, just how dedicated we are going to be to the very activity of God as our lives. Today is the day that we get to decide just how much we are willing to transform ourselves and through that transform the world. And if you're like me, there are still some things I need to be transformed within me. There are some things that I'm still um, looking to shift and change in the ways that I show up and if you're like me, you recognize that the world is asking, begging, really requesting for us to step into our own greatness so that the world may be transformed. If you are tired of the challenges, tired of the difficulties, tired of the disharmony that you see out in the world, well, today is your day. It is our day to choose to do something about it. And what we get to do about it is we get to show up in our fullness, to show up as the love of God, to show up as the light of God, to show up as the power, the abundance, the wholeness of God by recognizing that it is already at hand because it is already within this moment that we have said yes to, the sacred moment. And we get to look at the life of Jesus today in a very beautiful and specific way, our master teacher, our way shower. Some of us may call him our elder brother. And look at the way in which his life, he was a living testimony to the power and the potential that is always at hand. The power and the potential that God is and showed up through his life and as his life. And just like he was able to be that living testimony, we get to be that living testimony we get to dedicate ourselves to being the light of God in all of our relationships. By the way, including in the relationship with ourselves, with others, and with everything that is taking place around us. Now, imagine what will, and notice I said will, not can, what will take place if we all really own our place within humanity and our place within humanity within the consciousness and the energy and the power that is God. And so I say will because it is going to happen. We get to decide how quickly it happens. We get to decide the manner in which it shows up and it will happen where we experience a greater sense of love, a greater sense of light, a greater sense of um, connectedness and oneness with the divine. 
We get to experience that. And whether you knew it or not, today you said your sacred yes to it. Now, um, <laughs> for those of you who are new to Unity on the Bay and this is your first or second time, um, not only are we look around and inspiring community, but I have to tell you, I'm extremely funny. <laughs> to those of you who have been around more than once or twice, shh, don't tell them. <laughs> I actually was going to skip a joke today, but I was at a retreat yesterday, and they really begged for me to have a joke, so you can blame them for it. But so, actually, in a gathering just like this, in a community just like this, at the end of the service, the uh, minister, the pastor, was in the greeting line on the way out. And sure enough, two individuals that look kind of familiar, but not that familiar, um, came up and showed up and, you know, went to say hello to the minister. And the minister said, great to see you here. You need to be part of the army of God. And the two individuals said, no, 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 we, we are in the army of God. We are in the army of God. And the pastor says, well, then how come I only see you around Easter time? And they go to him and said, shh, we're part of the secret service. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you have done quite well hiding those badges. <laughs> and thank you all for being a part of Unity on the Bay. Um, so listen, uh, here we are again celebrating this very special holy moment, right? The um, awareness and the celebration of Easter and what we consider at Unity, um, an understanding of how the Christ presence and essence that we are gets to be rebirthed through us moment by moment. We celebrate it today especially, but it is a moment by moment, decision by decision thing. Now, except that it's not necessarily the rebirth of the Christ consciousness or that Christ divine nature, because that nature has always been. That nature always is. It does not need to be rebirthed. What is being rebirthed is our rededication to it, our commitment to honoring that which is within us, honoring who we have come here to be, and honoring the ways in which the world right now is asking to be blessed by the fullness of who each and every one of us is. Before we were born, we were already divine. Before we were born, we were already God's light. Like, take a moment to take that in. Before we even knew it, we simply were. That which we're always looking to experience. How powerful that we can do that. Now, so today, for me, more than a celebration of the risen Christ is almost like a vow renewal. How many of you knew that you came to a vow renewal this morning? But it is a vow renewal. It is us being able to stand firmly and anchor in the truth of our being and say to God, yes, God, I am. Yes, God, I do. And yes, God, I will. Because that, to me, is the Holy Trinity. I am, I do, I will. I will remember that the Christ is within me. I will remember that it is meant to shine forth from me. I will remember that I was brought to this very moment, this very time, this very community, this very world, this very humanity for the specific reason of sharing everything that I have been embodying and continuing to embody. It's not about what happened 2,000 years ago. It is about what's taking place now. And so I love this quote from one of our great unity ministers, Eric Butterworth. He says, Easter at its best is not a backward glance to the cross, the tomb, and the resurrection. It is a forward look to the quality of life it forecasts for all persons. It is not the story of God playing human, but of human at our best, demonstrating the God potential in all demonstrating, not remembering, demonstrating. Because I believe that it is about living it. 
And isn't it when we actually live it, when we actually show up as it, that we know that we know, right? Because if we know but we don't do, do we really know? If we know and we don't do, do we really trust it? Do we really have the faith in ourselves and the activity of God as us in who we are and the place that we have in the world around us? And so the more that we can be and allow that which is within us to show up, the more that we will know our oneness with God, the more that we will know love, the more that we will know strength and courage, the more that we will know that we are exactly who we were meant to be at exactly the right time for us to be. That your light shines so brightly that it not only lights your way, but it makes the path a little brighter for others. See, for me today is also about recognizing that we become the living testimony of what God has done through us and into our lives and into the life of humanity. To make, today, we make the choice of what kind of testimony we want our lives to be. And so are we willing to be a testimony of the love of God in the world, yes? yes. Amen and hallelujah. Are we willing to be a testimony to the power of God in the world, yes? yes. Amen and hallelujah. Are we willing to be a testimony to the peace of God in the world, yes? Well, say it with me, amen and hallelujah, right? <laughs> and when we do, look at how the energy flows. Look at how we get to feel even more alive in the moment. Your life is your message, and your light is your testimony. I want you to affirm that with me. My life is my message. My light is my testimony. You know, that was actually inspired by an inscription that my, one of my mentors um, wrote on a Bible I received when I was ordained as a unity minister. And he wrote on it, your life is your message, and the world is a better place because of it. Your life is your message, and the world is a better place because you are in it. The world's a better place because you have said yes. And today, you are willing to say yes once again. See, our life is a reflection of God's light, shining brightly before others and illuminating the path for others to get to know the God of their being, to trust, just like we begin to trust more and more in that Christ that is within us, to trust that it is in them also, to trust that they can also be in the world as light, as a blessing, as miracle makers. Now, yesterday, as I mentioned, we had this retreat, and it was amazing. I'm actually, in my notes, I actually have amazing. It was amazing. And in our discussions, you know, one of the things that we talked about was the room that we were in felt like a womb. And it made us think, and it got me to think, see, when we honor the resurrection of Jesus and we talk about Jesus rolling over the stone and coming out of the cave, we a lot of times talk about the tomb, right? And we talk about the tomb as a place of maybe, you know, being still within the challenge of the crucifixion, right? Kind of like licking our wounds a little bit sometimes, right? But I started thinking of it more as the womb, not the dark night of the soul that sometimes we have thought of it as, not the place where we're still in the pain or in the hurt, but rather a place where we are renourished, a place where we are being shaped, a place where we are recognizing that we have everything that we need at our disposal to be the presence of God in the world. And if you think about it in that way, if at least when I think about it in the way, you know, like thinking of it as maybe even the void, it's like that emptiness, a space of where we get so empty that all of a sudden we realize just the fullness of who we are. We empty ourselves of the limitations, the thinking that we're not worthy, the past experiences that have shrunk us. And we start to recognize just how fully, even like as I'm speaking, right? Like 
It just feels empowering. And I bet that it will feel empowering for you the more that you step into that, the more that you recognize that, yes, we have been in the womb, and I believe we have. I believe that we have been nourished. I believe that we have been made for this time, and it's time for us to be birthed. It is time for us to show up in the world from that place of being fully nourished, from that place of really recognizing that beautiful invitation that we receive, which is to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that God is here. It's a place where we can realize more fully, as Meister Eckhart, uh, the Christian mystic, once wrote, God expects but one thing of you. And that is that you should come out of yourself in so far as you are created, being made, and let God be God in you. Let God be God in you. Who are, who am I? (laughs) Who am I to deny God being God in me? Who am I to deny love being loved through me? Who am I to deny the light that I am to shine forth and light the path for myself and for others to recognize the power of God that is at hand, the opportunity that we have to live heaven on earth, the opportunity that we have to create heaven on earth for our loved ones, and for people that we may never even know. So Easter is so much more than a celebration of a man, an amazing man rising from the dead. It is a recognition that the Christ is in us, the hope of all glory is within us, and is bursting forth into the world. It is a reminder to continue to be committed and dedicated to living the principles, living the truth, and be the expressions of good. And so we talk about the crucifixion, during Easter, and we talk about the dying of the old ways, of the letting go of that which no longer serves us, right? Uh, the erroneous belief that uh, we have about ourselves and about life and about others. We talk about the resurrection, being reborn into our Christhood, being more aware of the God presence that we are, and we don't sometimes talk too much about the next piece in my Holy Trinity today. I, I coined it that, which is the Ascension the Holy Trinity of the crucifixion, of the resurrection, and the ascension. Because Jesus showed us how we can also ascend and ascend to that higher level of consciousness that is able to see that which we have to see to live from the place of God, from the place of knowing. And so if we're really going to honor the life and the message of Jesus, the legacy and the testimony that he had, and by the way, Look at how powerful it is to live into our own Christhood that our way shower did it 2,000 years ago. Didn't change the life of the people around them only. Changes our life. Can you imagine? Can you see? And are you willing to understand that the more that we say yes to that Christ presence within us, we not only make a shift for those that are around us, but we make a shift for the generations to come. That is just how powerful this sacred moment is if we're willing to make that dedication and that commitment. And so he shows us that with faith and in God, nothing can stop us from living our truth, that nothing is greater than the power of God. And if we're really going to look at the message and the life of Jesus and the legacy of Jesus, I think it's up to us to also reimagine or rethink some of what we have been taught. Because Jesus, for me, did not come to absolve us of original sin. Jesus came to show us that we are original blessing. Not that we have original blessing. We are the original blessing. And so letting go of the guilt, letting go of the shame, and living into the truth that we are one in God, that heaven is at hand, and that in our oneness with the divine, we create heaven. I love what Jim Palmer, author of, get this, love the title of this book, Inner Anarchy, and he's the founder at the Center for Non-Religious Spirituality. He said, there was a Jesus before Christianity. That Jesus was fierce, courageous, and unyielding. He stood for the inherent worth of every human being. He denounced the religious lie that humankind was separated from God and told people to find heaven within themselves. Jesus proclaimed another world was possible. He chastised people for sitting around waiting for God to save the world and challenged them to wake up and save it themselves. 
That is what I believe the message of that inner Christ is beckoning us into. No longer to think that something outside of us is going to be lifting us up. It is our decision to be lifted up by the very activity of God that has always been, before we were born, a part of our truth. And so are we willing to do that this morning? And actually, in this very second, it's a real question. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be dedicated to being the original blessing upon the world? Yes? Yes. Well, hallelujah and amen. We're in the right place. So now Jesus rolled a stone away from the tomb, from the womb, and we must do the same. Whatever has kept us from wanting to show up in the world, it is time that we roll our own stones away, that we do the forgiveness work, that we do the healing work, that we just take the opportunity and the message that is within us and say yes to it without any need for um, excuses anymore, without any need to not or uh, need to fight it any longer. Because guess what? At the end of the day, we're going to lose that fight because the power of God within us is greater than anything that we ourselves put in our way. And so what did Jesus do after his resurrection as he was moving towards the ascension? He didn't just ascend. He actually showed us a path towards it because he went and he looked for the people around him. He went to look for the followers and he told them the good news He testified. He was a testimony of the power of God. And so how are we being that testimony to others so that we, through that process, can ascend into a higher awareness of the love and the light and everything that God is in the world to be that living testimony of God in the world so that others may experience God through us. We are the space where God is. And we and our lives are the place where God is expressed. Now, I have to tell you that when I first came up with a theme of the Great Awakening a couple of weeks ago for today, I was thinking I was going to just say, well, the Great Awakening, right? Like, awakening to the truth that is within us. I think it's a great awakening, but I actually don't think it's the great one. I think it's one of the awakenings. Because I think it's the great awakening is when not only do we awaken to the truth that is within us, but we choose to actually live it. We choose to actually bring it forth, our God potential. And so, yes, Christ is risen in us. We must now live that Christ. And through that, not only will we experience our miracles, but we will create miracles for others. This Easter, we not only rise up, we show up. We shine up. We resurrect everything that is within us that is asking to be shared with the world. Why? Because we're done playing it small, because we're done not remembering the truth of our being, and because we have a legacy to maintain. The legacy of the Christ within us is a legacy that continues to be alive and live through and as us. And so this Easter, we awaken to the suffering of others. And we shine forth oneness and unity. This Easter, we awaken to the erroneous belief that anyone is unworthy of love and compassion. And we shine forth that we are all God's children, that we are all worthy, sacred, and holy, and that we are all meant to be at God's table. When we believe in our God potential, that life is good. When we believe in that life potential and that God potential, we know that God is good and that humanity is ultimately good. And let me tell you, when we believe that good is at hand, we do some amazing things. We take the chances to be that light and to be that love because we know that we are on the winning side. We know that we are part of a storyline that is going somewhere good. And so we are our own ministry. We are empowered to serve. And our purpose is to make God manifest. As it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light shine before others. Now, I don't know one of the main questions that everybody tends to ask themselves in the spiritual journey at some point, which is, why are we here? (laughs) Why are we here? I don't know the answer to that. But I really love what some people share, which is that God wanted to experience God. God wanted to experience itself. And so this Easter, what I am committing to is to allow myself to experience the God of others and to live in a way that allows others to witness the God in me. 
so that God can experience itself through the connections, through that which we put out into the world and that which we do with the potential that is within us. Let God know me through God in others. And so, yes, we go down to the river to get renewed. Yes, we go down to the river to get replenished, but we also climb up the mountaintop to shine and light it up to shine brightly for so many more, to experience and see the potential that is within. And so, yes, I am a little fired up if you haven't been able to tell, but that is because, hallelujah, I am awakened, you're awakened, we are awakened. I am risen, you are risen, we are risen. And yes, God, I do, I am, and I will. Say that with me. God, I do, I am, and I will. And for that, We are risen today, and for that, we were made to be in this very holy moment so that we can shine forth and go out into the world and do the good that is before us. Namaste. Happy Easter. Thank you, God. Amen. (laughs) Thank you so much for visiting our YouTube channel. We post new videos every week to keep you positive, present, and inspired to your divinity. Please click on the subscribe button below and also that notification bell. Remember to share this with your friends and your family, those that you know will be inspired just like you have been. And always remember that we love you, that we bless you, that we behold the Christ in you, and we see you doing great things. Thanks and take care.